to start where you would like. Yeah, sure. Say. Start with Palestinian issue. Sure. Uh, can you comment on the embassy uh, in Jerusalem? You know, it is alleged that it is being uh, a man that is confiscated from the Palestinians. There is a big outbreak yesterday. Is there any way to it? I, I, I did see it, and I appreciate the opportunity to comment on it, primarily because there has been some uh, misinformation or some misimpressions about uh, our plans. To be very clear, uh, we have not decided on which site to pursue. A number of factors, including the history of the various sites that uh, are in contention, uh, will be part of that very site selection process. We are committed, as you know, Saeed, to keeping the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. The United States recognizes Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Uh, Jerusalem itself, of course, is a final status issue to be resolved through direct negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians. And we're currently considering two options for our future embassy facility in Jerusalem. Uh, one is the Allenby uh, site, and the second is the Arnona site. Uh, but again, no decision has been made on site selection. Uh, in accordance with Israeli law, we started the process to amend uh, the town plan for both potential locations. The public con uh, comment period for the Allenby site remains open. Uh, we also expect to advance the plan for the Arnona site shortly uh, with a separate comments period to open soon. Uh, the reason there is a comments period uh, is so that we can uh, garner uh, a fuller sense uh, of public reaction, public response uh, to sites that may be in contention. Uh, the public comment periods will uh, allow the public uh, to voice any objections to the proposed zoning changes before the district uh, committee asks for any adjustments to those proposed zoning changes, construction, location, and a range of other factors, including, as I said before, the history of these very sites uh, will be part of that ultimate site selection. So let me ask you in retrospect, I mean, it's been since 2017, when the former administration recognized Jerusalem as capital. No one really has followed suit. None of your allies, uh, the British and the Germans, nobody did. Was that a mistake, perhaps? You know, maybe you, know, you can nullify this and, and go back to Tel Aviv and, um, until the Jerusalem issue is resolved. I mean, there is an international status for Jerusalem that you, could, that you have followed for a very long time, for decades, that you could redo the same thing. Said, uh, Jerusalem is Israel's capital. Uh, the last administration recognized that. This administration recognizes that. Uh, but what has not changed is the fact of the status of Jerusalem as a final status issue. Uh, this issue, uh, the final status of the holy city, uh, is to be determined between uh, and by the parties uh, themselves, Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, one, one, sure. one, one more question on this issue. Uh, this year has been very bloody for the Palestinians, as has the, uh, the last year. You know, more than 14 or 15 Palestinians, and many of them killed, teenagers, and so on. Are you concerned that maybe uh, the Israeli occupation army is being too trigger happy to you know, shoot and then you know, find out what, what's going on? And would you call on them perhaps to, you know, to pull back? From this shoot first policy. Said, you made reference to the tragic loss of life that we've seen on the part of Palestinians and Israelis uh, over the course of the latter part of last year and then this year. Uh, today, of course, is the 18th of January. We're only 18 days into this month. And already since the beginning of this year alone, 15 Palestinians have been killed. Several Israelis uh, have been injured uh, in the West Bank. We are deeply concerned uh, by the situation in the West Bank. Uh, the preceding period has seen a sharp and alarming increase uh, in Palestinian and Israeli deaths and injuries, uh, including many children among them. We continue to emphasize to both parties, Israelis and Palestinians, uh, that uh, we want to see a de-escalation de uh, of tensions. Uh, we want to see um, constructive engagement, we continue to emphasize uh, to both Israelis and Palestinians uh, that they both equally deserve to have equal measures of security, stability, justice, dignity, uh, and democracy. Uh, it is alarming to see uh, the pace of violence, the, the rate of deaths, uh, of injuries, 
Uh, it is also incumbent on the parties uh, to take steps themselves uh, to see a diminution in the tensions that have, have spiked in recent weeks and months. Can I follow up on two sure. um, As you know, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and Rick McCullough are in Israel now. They expect also to meet with President Abbas. Um, you know that, right? I'm aware. You look a bit surprised. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> okay. um, so basically, John Kirby told me today uh, that the purpose of the visit was to emphasize the U.S. position vis-a-vis -vis the two-state solution and also to encourage the parties, as you said, to not undermine uh, that prospect. Um, so is the U.S. current policy um, <clears throat> is to keep the status quo in the Palestinian areas or not to be involved in any peace prospect, not to encourage the Israelis and Palestinians to get into any uh, uh, peace pro process or negotiation, considering the Netanyahu makeup government of being right wing. I mean, in other ways, like basically, you'll be happy just to keep things as they are and not to initiate anything new. Our policy is fundamentally a pragmatic one. At the present moment, and this goes back to Saeed's question, we recognize the deeply concerning trends that have uh, taken place and in some ways accelerated in recent uh, months, but also over the course of several years now. Those are the very trends that over the course of last year and then earlier this year uh, have led to extraordinarily high, far too high numbers of deaths and injuries uh, both on the part of Palestinians and Israelis. So task number one, as we see it, uh, is to do what we can uh, to help de-escalate tensions, to see to it that this alarming rate of violence is diminished, that tensions are eased, uh, and to encourage both sides to refrain from steps that only further exacerbate tensions. Um, our first priority at, at, the, at the present moment is doing just that, is seeing if we can uh, be a constructive uh, voice, a constructive partner in helping the two sides de-escalate and put an end to this cycle of violence. Now, of course, our longer term approach uh, continues to be support for a negotiated two-state solution, a negotiated two-state solution uh, that will bring into existence what we ultimately hope to see, Israelis and Palestinians living side by side equally enjoying equal measures of stability, of security, of democracy, of dignity, uh, of prosperity as well. Now, of course, this is a moment in some ways of triage. Uh, our end goal is one that um, is quite far off. We recognize that at the moment. No one at the moment is speaking to the possibility of near-term constructive dialogue culminating anytime soon in a two-state solution between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, we acknowledge that. We appreciate that. That's why our approach is practical. It's pragmatic. It is focused on what Palestinians need at the moment and what Israelis need at the moment. In delivering that, what we are trying to do is to set the stage so that the parties can, over the longer term, make progress towards what remains uh, our goal, what has remained uh, the goal of uh, Israelis and Palestinians over successive decades, and that is uh, a two-state solution to uh, this long-standing uh, conflict. I want to ask you about Yemen, but unless somebody wants to ask about Israel. Anything else on uh, Israel? Just one more on this uh, Israel-related uh, trip. Are you in a position to confirm the media reports that the U.S. has uh, moved munitions stored in Israel to uh, Ukraine or using in Ukraine? Uh, if so, can you speak to the significance of that? And also, what other steps do you expect from Israel, given the fact that there's a negotiation going on? I'm not in a position to, to speak to that report. I would refer you to DOD if they're in a position to uh, speak to those types of uh, tactical movements. That's not something uh, we would speak to from here. I suspect it's also not something that uh, our partners throughout the government uh, would speak to in any detail uh, as well.